Throughout many seasons of solitary wilderness living, numerous outstanding participants have emerged. However, most are physically fit men who hold a natural advantage, such as Roland, the bison slayer, and Jordan, the moose nemesis. Yet there is a woman who, despite not having won a championship, cannot be denied her strength. She is Callie, the runner-up of Season 7, who has killed two porcupines and captured four snow rabbits in a single day, surviving 89 days in the wild. Let's take a look at her entire challenge. After reaching adulthood, Callie primarily lived in the wilderness, dedicating herself to all aspects of survival, such as making traps, tanning leather, fishing, and hunting. She joined the competition both to win the $1 million prize and to further hone her wilderness survival skills. On the sixth day, Callie found a rotten chicken leg in the forest. While others might find it disgusting, she took it as a sign of good luck. Before understanding the patterns of large animals and fish, Callie targeted squirrels and rabbits. She set wire traps along the animal trails she found. The rest of her time was spent wandering around to become more familiar with her surroundings. Unexpectedly, she encountered several wolves in the forest. Curiosity drove her to follow them, although she quickly lost sight of them. The presence of wolves was not good news as it likely reduced the number of nearby animals, affecting Callie's survival. By this time, other contestants had found their bases and were starting to build permanent shelters. Callie struggled with this. Despite searching in all directions, she found no suitable flatland. She settled for the best available spot, which required leveling the ground and collecting logs to construct her shelter. After a few uncomfortable nights in a shelter that offered little protection against the wind, she decided to move it to a more sheltered location. Building a house is time-consuming and laborious, and without sufficient food, one might be exhausted by the time it is completed. Callie, armed with her bow and arrows, ventured into the forest and heard a noise in a rocky area. Looking down, she saw a porcupine. She quickly shot a blunt arrow which hit but did not penetrate the animal. Unsure if the porcupine was dead, she used a sharp, broadhead arrow to finish it off. After taking two hits, the porcupine lay still in the crevice of the rocks. Carefully, she pulled it out. The porcupine, North America's second largest rodent, can weigh up to 14 kilograms. Although Callie disliked killing, she needed the meat and fat from the porcupine. She took it to the lake, gutted it, skinned it, and removed the inedible organs, leaving the meat along with the liver, kidneys, and heart, which nearly filled her pot. With this, Callie could finally focus on building her shelter. She moved the built part of her shelter to a new location intact. After a week's depletion, only porcupine soup remained. But the shelter seemed unchanged. Time waits for no one, and where the next meal will come from is still unknown. Fortunately, Callie had set many traps in the woods early on. Regrettably, the first one she checked was empty. Luckily, the remaining traps caught a rabbit. Callie immediately killed the rabbit upon returning to the camp. With the addition of two rabbit meals, she constructed the door of her shelter. With some time before winter, Callie had discovered clay at her site at the start of the challenge. Since she carried few containers, and one pot was insufficient for both water and cooking, she decided to make some clay pots now. After digging enough clay, Callie shaped it into long strips in her dwelling. If the shaping was not ideal, she would add some rocks and sand for tempering. Then she formed the clay strips into a pot shape, placed them at the edge of the fire for a basic baking and shaping, and finally fired them in the fire to make pottery. After a busy day, she ended up with two fairly decent-sized pots. By day 25, Callie was ready to build a fireplace and complete the final ceiling of her dwelling. She dug stones from the ground. Although calories were rapidly depleting, the stone fireplace would be better at storing heat. Once built, it would surely improve the temperature inside the shelter, reducing Callie's energy consumption. After gathering enough stones from nearby, the remaining work was like playing Tetris, stacking the stones layer by layer to form a semicircular fireplace. She then applied wet clay in the gaps. Afterward, Callie tested the fireplace and found the smoke exhaust worked especially well. The space left next to it was simply built into a wall with the remaining stones. The upper triangular area using wood, alternating a piece of wood with a layer of moss, gradually sealing the entire wall. In fact, she had the blueprint of the house in her mind early on, knowing it wouldn't take much effort. 
so the building proceeded at a steady pace. By day 34, the challenge area welcomed its first snow. The snow meant berries withered and wood moistened, but it also left animal tracks in the snow, making it easier for Callie to track them and set traps in appropriate positions. However, Callie also encountered an unexpected gain during this outing. She saw many mushrooms stored by squirrels on a tree, and she unhesitatingly took some of them. Upon returning to the shelter to rest, the bloodstains on the cutting board attracted a weasel. It was rare for a living creature to dare approach her in the wilderness. Callie neither drove it away nor killed it, but watched it eat the remnants on the cutting board and leave. It's time to check the traps again. Perhaps due to her kindness, the first trap had a rabbit, a typical catch for Callie. She didn't expect much, but she caught a second one, totaling four snow hares for the day. These hares provided about 650 grams of protein, though they were low in fat, only 72 grams. Callie deeply thanked nature. Due to the low fat content of the rabbits, eating them alone couldn't maintain her weight. She had lost 20% since the start of the challenge. That day, she found porcupine tracks in the snow, an ideal food source because of its higher fat content. Unexpectedly, she also found wolf tracks next to the porcupines, indicating it was being tracked by the wolf too. Callie could only hope the wolf hadn't succeeded. With the Arctic winter approaching, all animals were desperately competing for limited food. After following the tracks for a while, Callie was stunned to see the snow covered with dense hair tracks, completely obscuring the porcupines. Although she couldn't locate the porcupine, she could set several traps for hares, making the trip worthwhile. On day 44, Western Halloween, Callie dressed as a porcupine to show respect for the animals. Though she had eaten the last porcupine nearly a month ago, and now only had snow hares. To celebrate the festival, she decided to indulge and stewed an entire hare, planning to eat it all clean that night. The next day, Callie finally remembered to make a fishing net. She had tried fishing before, but the wind at her location blew the fishing line back, making it impossible. Other contestants had caught up to 20 fish, but having a net, even a crude one, was better than none. She finished the net in one morning, though its mesh was quite large, likely unable to catch fish under two pounds. Callie, having lost the porcupine, now saw fishing as her only way to obtain fat. Unfortunately, the area had a disadvantage. The lakeshore was all rocky. Before the temperatures dropped, she could fish standing on the rocks, but after the drop, the rocks were covered with thick ice, making them very slippery. While choosing a spot to place her net, Callie slipped, injuring her face and lips, bleeding heavily, but not severely enough to require stitches or to force her to quit the competition. She resolved to focus on land animals before another temperature drop. With another cold spell, the snow in the challenge area increased, burying her traps halfway and undoubtedly affecting their efficacy. She had to reset them daily as securing food became increasingly challenging. Callie had no choice but to take a step she had long avoided. She had tracked a porcupine den and checked it several times, never finding the occupant at home. Today, she plans to try her luck again. Callie saw several pieces of bark chewed off outside the porcupine den. Undoubtedly, this was the work of the porcupine, indicating it hadn't been eaten by other predators. Callie found the porcupine's tracks, placed a steel wire snare between a tree and the base of a stone wall, and waited for the porcupine to venture out for food. Two days later, when Callie checked, she was greatly disappointed. The porcupine had pushed the snare aside, completely ignoring her plan. Time waits for no one. Since the trap didn't work, she decided to take a tougher approach. Callie squeezed into the crevice where the porcupine was hiding, about four meters deep, a tricky spot unreachable with a bow and arrow. She found a back entrance to the burrow, scared it toward the front, then returned, drew her bow, and shot it. The porcupine quickly became motionless. Callie squeezed in and pulled it out. This was risky. If she got stuck, it was uncertain whether she could call for help or if rescue could find her in time, she might even freeze to death. However, risk often correlates with reward. The porcupine had stored a lot of fat, essential for Callie to maintain her weight. She hurried back to the shelter, eager to butcher the porcupine and prepare a substantial meal. Unfortunately, she discovered white spots on the porcupine's liver, a sign of tularemia, posing a risk of infection if consumed. She was conflicted, hesitant to discard it, but afraid to eat it. As time passed, on the 64th day, increasing snowfall severely affected her traps. 
Walking to check them consumed more calories, but yields were diminishing. The imbalance between intake and expenditure made the porcupine meat increasingly appealing. Four days later, with her food supplies nearly depleted, Callie decided to risk eating the porcupine. She saved organs like the kidneys and liver for bait, boiled the rest of the meat longer to ensure safety, as she had already been exposed to the pathogen and hadn't fallen ill after several days. Callie cooked a pot of fat and meat until it was well done, then began to eat. The rich soup was almost tear-inducingly comforting. The long-missed fat revitalized her body, making her feel fully revived. This meal could sustain her for at least three more days. The porcupine's fat helped stabilize Callie's weight, and she regained enough energy to chop wood and split logs as before. Unfortunately, her good days were short-lived. While working, Callie felt a sharp pain in her right shoulder. She took off her clothes and used a light to see that a porcupine quill had penetrated her flesh, despite the layers of clothing. The medical kit provided by the show included tweezers, which Callie used to grip the exposed porcupine quill. Despite the pain, she managed to pull out the barbed quill. By day 78, the lake in Callie's area had frozen over. In a few more days, it would be thick enough to support a person, signaling the upcoming ice fishing season. However, Callie faced a new physical issue. She felt a tingling pain at the tip of her right big toe. Upon removing her shoe and warming by the fire, she discovered a large blister that had turned purple and was numb to the touch, clearly indicating frostbite. If not properly protected, this could lead to necrosis and amputation. To avoid being medically evacuated for health reasons, protecting her toes became crucial. On day 82, temperatures dropped to minus 33 degrees Celsius. The ice on the lake was now sturdy enough to support a horse. Callie decided to go ice fishing. Catching even one or two fish would allow her to stay at least 10 more days. Using familiar techniques, she chopped a hole in the ice, used rabbit fur and porcupine kidneys as bait, and attached a weight made of clay. She then waited quietly. Normally, she could stay outside all afternoon, but now, due to her frostbitten toe, she had to get up and move every hour or two or return to the shelter to warm up. This significantly limited her ability to gather food. Her fishing efforts were unsuccessful, with no bites after spending an afternoon by the hole. Now, daylight lasted only five hours, and Callie had to prepare the firewood for the 19-hour nights during this time. Therefore, checking the traps she had set in the woods each day became crucial. Fortunately, her spirits were high. She neither missed her family enough to want to go home, nor felt low enough to quit. This trip out was not in vain, as her trap finally caught a rabbit. Since the snow had obscured the animal's paths, setting the noose in the right place had become challenging. Catching the rabbit was a much-needed boon, as her food supplies at the shelter were nearly depleted. That evening, Callie fried a pot of rabbit offal using porcupine fat. As the delicious smell filled the shelter, her mouth watered uncontrollably. She praised how delicious the rabbit offal was, stating it was exactly the life she wanted. By day 88, after resetting the gill net in the lake, she drilled another hole and sat down to fish. Despite her good spirits and determination, the fishing was poor with no activity all afternoon. Tonight, her pot contained only leftover bones, which she boiled into a broth to fill her stomach. With only 12 days left to reach the 100-day mark and the tempting million-dollar prize, she resolved to endure the hardships for herself and her family. However, her frostbite was not improving and began to spread under her toenail which worried Callie the most. The next day was medical checkup day for the contestants. Considering Callie's earlier frostbite, the doctors were particularly thorough. After a detailed examination, they found that the frostbite on Callie's right foot had worsened significantly since the last checkup. The lack of food would make recovery difficult, and continuing could cause irreversible damage to her body. Additionally, a new frostbite was forming on her left big toe. According to the show's rules, she had no choice but to end her challenge on day 89.